In this video, we want to derive the so-called Lagrange duplication formula. And in particular, this will be helpful when I want to derive some properties of the Riemann zeta function. Let's start from the definition of the beta function. So beta, which depends on two parameters, zeta and w, two complex variables. We have a property. And I will also show you how to derive this property in the next video. It's a well, very well-known property of the beta function. This is equal to gamma of z, gamma of w, divided by gamma of z plus w. And this is equal to integral from 0 to 1, u to the z minus 1, 1 minus u to the power w minus 1 and then we integrate over du du now if we set w w equal to z beta of uh, zz which is equal to gamma of z gamma of z divided by gamma of 2z this is equal to integral from 0 to 1, u to the z minus 1, 1 minus u, to the z minus 1, du. Now we can change the integration variable, so we can go from u to u equal to 1 plus x over 2. If we make that change, we integrate from minus 1 to 1, then here we have 1 plus x over 2 to the power z minus 1. 1 minus u will become 1 minus x over 2 to the power z minus 1. And then the differential of u can be written as dx over 2. This is also equal to 1 over 2z, 2 to the 2z minus 1. Integral from minus 1 to 1. 1 minus x squared to the z minus 1 dx. Now, this is also equal to twice the integral from 0 to 1 instead of the integral from minus 1 to 1 because uh, we are integrating an even function over a symmetric domain. So it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And this function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So we can write this as twice the same integral. So here we have 2 to the 2z minus 1, integral from 0 to 1, 1 minus x squared with a z minus 1 dx. Therefore, we have calculated the following, uh, so we have obtained the following result, gamma of z times gamma of z times 2 to the 2z minus 1 is equal to 2 gamma of 2z integral from 0 to 1, 1 minus x squared, we raise it to the power z minus 1 dx. Now, we can also evaluate the better function at 1 half and z, and this is equal to gamma of 1 half gamma of z divided by gamma of z plus 1 half but we also can we can also use the integral representation of uh, the beta function this is the integral from 0 to 1 then we have u to the minus 1 half because uh, the first argument is equal to 1 half then we have 1 minus u to the z minus 1 du now we can change the variable one more time from u to x and in particular the transformation law is the following square root of u equal to x. So the integral will become the following one. We can see that du over square root of u is simply equal to 2x from here. So it means that u to the minus one half du will become 2x dx. So simple as that. Therefore, we can factor out the 2. 
we have in the integral from 0 to 1, 1 minus u to the z minus 1 will become 1 minus x squared to the z minus 1, and then here we have dx. But, but uh, what is this? It's exactly the integral that appears here, multiplied by 2, right? So basically we have found that this integral here, multiplied by 2, is beta of 1 half z. And therefore here we can write gamma of 2z, which multiplies gamma of 1 half, gamma of z, and then we divide by gamma of one, uh, z plus 1 half. At this point, it is quite uh, easy to recognize that gamma of 1 half can be calculated from the definition of the gamma function, so I will not do it here, but this is equal to the root of pi. And what we get, if we simplify this gamma of z with this gamma of z, we can write the following result. Gamma of uh, z multiplied by gamma of z plus 1 half is equal to 2 to the 1 minus 2z times the square root of uh, pi, and then finally we are left with gamma of 2z. And let me write it properly, 2z. And this is the final formula, which is known as Lagrange duplication formula. As I said, we will use it in a subsequent lecture.